Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I hope you guys are having a great day today. Wherever you're tuning at, you know, um, wanted to talk about the co main event for the top rank card because I just got finished watching it. Uh, I, I just had a chance to watch Jose Pedraza versus Antonio Losada, and this to me was a very interesting fight coming in for a couple of reasons. There were some good storylines coming in. You know, obviously, when we talk about Pedraza, we're talking about a fighter that is coming off a loss in his most recent uh, bid at a world title or a unification fight with Vasil Lomachenko. Uh, got, you know, pretty much outclassed in the fight, you know. Um, did pretty good, you know, held his own for a while, um, didn't get too embarrassed like most Lomachenko opponents, but eventually Lomachenko turned it on and uh, it went the full 12. Um, so that being said, you know, this is a, an important fight for him against a guy in Antonio Lozada who just last year he scored one of the, the bigger upsets when he pretty much uh, upset Felix Verdejo. You know, and Verdejo we know was, was a highly touted prospect and he stopped Verdejo um, and, and really put his career on, on the right track. But then uh, his fight after that, he fought a, a guy who was like 12, 7, and 1. And uh, he drew at him, so he actually is one of those fighters that that that, sh that that showed himself to fight down to his level of opposition. So with that being said, I thought I, I thought I thought the fight was interesting for that reason. Um, you know, when we talk about Antonio Lozada, you know, he, he's one of those fighters, man, where he, you know, I always say in, on, on, on here on True School Sports, once you bake a once you bake a cake, it's a damn cake. Like, and, and what that means is, once a fighter is set in his ways, you know, you can refine it, but he will revert in type, and he'll be who he is. Uh, Lozada only has but one way to come to, to to fight, and that's squared up, coming forward, charging forward. So uh, he throws a lot of punches. I believe I believe he, I, I was reading somewhere that he averaged about nine, about ninety five punches per round, um, but that doesn't really matter because you know technique technique and precision beats volume. Every single time, uh, every single time. So with that being said, uh, for Pedraza, this, this this is a fight for him where he's fighting someone who is definitely not on his level. He's fighting someone that he is favored to beat, but he's fighting also fighting someone as we can see already that if he's not on his p's and q's, if he is not at his best, he will be taken advantage of and he will be thoroughly beat up for the same way Felix Verdejo was. So um, overall, this fight, uh, Pedraza did a lot of things really really well. Um, we'll start off with just the fundamentals of boxing, the jab. Um, Lozada's one of those fighters who's incredibly long, but he does not fight like a fighter who's as long as his frame actually projects, you know. But Pedraza, early on in the fight, you know, was establishing his range and his jab early, you know, just, you know, stabbing up top, stabbing downstairs, moving, slipping, you know, doing really good stuff with this jab. And uh, that that continue on for the, for the duration of the fight. Um, the probably the most impressive thing I saw Pedraza doing in this fight is he was fighting both out of the he was switch he was switch hitting so you know he was fighting uh, southpaw and he was fighting orthodox and he was having success from both stances landing straight left straight rights uh, counter punches um, because but again Lozada he's not he's there to be hit he is there to be hit you know he comes pressing forward he squares up sometimes he leans forward and. You know, Pedraza systematically broke him down. Um, first, at first, in the earlier parts of the fight, it started with a jab. It started with counter punching, um, and then eventually, as um, the middle rounds came, you saw Pedraza kind of not throwing as many punches from the outside because he wanted um, Lozada to come towards him and give him something to counter off of. So, a lot of times, you would see Lozada out of orthodox stance, he would throw the jab. Pedraza would would slip, or he would pit, he would parry down and just boom left hand over the top and, and there were many instances of this fight where that, le that that straight left hand over the top was there and it was landing so you had that you had the fact that you know in this fight Pedraza many times was he was on he was on the ropes like he was on the ropes but he was whooping this dude's ass in the ropes countering off the ropes you know just doing all kinds of sensational things off the ropes um, because Lozada again he doesn't move his head his, he's there to be hit um, I'll be honest with you guys, like, Lozada had his moments, like, I think it was round seven. He was pressing forward and he landed a barrage of left hooks um, when, her, when Pedraza was on the ropes. But aside from that, this was a fight where I, I, I think, I think to be honest with you guys, this is probably the best perform, best, the best Jose Pedraza I've ever seen. I think this is the best I've ever seen him. Um, 
And I'm not sure if that's, I'm not really sure if it's down to just the, the guy that was in front of him being made to order for him. And, and odds are that has a lot, a lot to do with it because Top Rank has the best matchmakers in boxing and Bruce Trampler and Brad Goodman. So they knew what they, they knew what Lozada was, they knew what Pedraza was, and they knew that the styles match a certain way. So I'm not putting that past the fine folks at Top Rank to, to match Pedraza like this and make him look good. But aside from that, you know, regardless of the other styles, you still mentally, because boxing is a mental sport, you still got to be in the mental capacity and the mental frame to go out there and execute. And we've seen it a lot of times where fighters are in fights where they're supposed to win and they're not in the mental capacity to execute. And, and Pedraza executed. Um, he broke him down, going on the body, coming up top, slipping punches, double jabbing, um, 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 using his leg, using his feet, you know, fighting shoulder to shoulder. You know, we saw a lot of things Jose Pedraza in this fight, and I'm gonna say it like this, man. I think it was the best performance of, that I've seen at least of his entire career because, you know, he showed his overall complete skill set in this fight. It was, it was really good stuff from Jose Pedraza, and it's a fight where you know Pedraza's been talking about. There have been some rumblings about Pedraza potentially moving to 140. Um, he stated he wants to move to 140. I'm not really sure that's a good idea for him. Um, but, you know, it's his career. It's his prerogative to choose. You know, 140 is a very stacked weight class at the moment. And, you know, when we talk about 140, we're talking about a, a, a good crop of fighters like Josh Taylor and Regis Progre and Maurice Hooker and Jose Ramirez, you know, Ivan Baranchek. There's some good fighters at 140 at the moment. And can he beat those kind of guys? We don't know because we don't know how he's going to, you know, look at that weight. But, you know, if I'm Pedraza, if, 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 you, really, if you really think you're worth your weight and salt, salt as a fighter, I would go and I would try to align myself. I, I would try to continue working my way back up as a contender to uh, get, get that Lomachenko rematch. Now, obviously, I don't think he's going to beat Lomachenko, but I'm saying men mentality-wise, if you think you're worth your weight and salt and as good, good a fighter as you think you are, you go in there and you challenge Lomachenko. If not, you know, you, you, you go the Jorge Linares route, you say, okay, you throw your hands up and say, you know what, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't beat this guy. So I'm gonna go to 140, but then you you run the risk that if you go to 140, you could fight someone potentially bigger, stronger than you. Maybe 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 not as skillful as you, but someone bigger and stronger than you. Like like well, Linares, he fought Pablo Cesar Cano, and Pablo Cesar Cano is not a skilled as Jorge Linares, but he's naturally stronger. And and you saw what he did to Jorge Linares; he destroyed him in like one round or whatever it was. So, um, you know, he, his career is an interesting place. But aside from that, this to me was his best best performance against this Antonio Lozada, breaking him down in the ninth round. Um, making his father, making Lozada's father, have to get out, have to get get on the uh, the, the ring and, and pretty much save his son and wave the, and wave the white flag. Um, you know, Pedraza really showed, and, and you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is Lomachenko fight, and just hearing about how these Lomachenko fans want to hype up Pedraza as this great fighter. You know, I have been shitting on the guy quite a lot recently, but this is a good reminder that hey, Brendan, you may not you may not think he's the the creme de la creme as far as world class fighters go. But he is still a world class fighter. And tonight, we saw what boxing is. You know, the boxing is all about levels. You know, Lozada was not on that level. Lozada, um, you know, he got a good upset against Felix Verdejo, but I think it really said more about Verdejo than him. And that's not to take away from his win. Um, he's a very basic fighter. You know, a guy who comes forward, um, who, who likes to pressure you. And if you can handle the pressure and if you have any skills or precision to boot, you beat him. That's how it works. Um, if you look at his last three fights, he's been a tale of three fighters. You know, he fought Verdejo, brought in to lose, he beat him. He fought a 12-7-1 a guy, fought down to his level, you know, he got a draw. Then he fights Pedraza, a, a two-weight world champion, probably the best fighter he's ever fought, and got the ass of his life. So, you know, he's he's someone that, I mean, I think he is what he is. I don't think Lozada's going to get any better, but um, he got... Thoroughly outclassed in this fight, and it was it was brilliant stuff to watch. If you didn't get a chance to go watch uh, uh, Pedraza's performance, performance this week, then I would implore you to go do so because it was really good stuff. And that's just my take on the fight. Personally, for me, um, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Pedraza test the waters 140 for like, a fight against you know take a soft touch, see how you look. And if he looks good, then uh, I just I, I say why not make 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 a run at 140. You know it might be 140 might be the breath of fresh air that that Pedraza needs in his career. Because, look, let, let's, let, let, let's be real, guys. 135 is going to be stacked in no time. You know, you, you got Devin Haney coming up. You got Ryan Garcia. You got Tiafimo Lopez. Um, he's not going to be able to beat these guys. I mean, I don't, don't respect him. He's not going to be able to beat these guys coming up. You know, they're going to rip him into an asshole. So, you know, go to 140 because you're tall for the 135 anyway. Go to 140. The weight cut won't be as sharp for you. Um, 
one of, one or two of these guys are probably going to move up in the next year or so because of the World Boxing Super Series. Um, and after that, you know, who knows, man? You might, you might, it might, it might be your best weight. So that's my, my that's my take on the matter. I think he should go test the waters 140. But you guys, let me know in the comments down below. What did you think about uh, Jose Pedraza's ninth round TKO stoppage over Antonio Lozada? Do you guys think that he should try to work his way back into lightweight title contention, or should he just do away with 135 altogether? And make that move to 140 that he has been whispering about. Let me know what you guys think in the, in the comments down below. Hey, take the time to subscribe, like I say in every single one of these videos. You can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just giving Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.